Welcome back to Paddy's Golf Tips. Uh, very commonly asked about the setup, so I'm going to cover it again, hopefully to get this into everybody's mind, especially those people who are new to the game. The winner of the gold medal and the champion golfer of the year is Podrick Harrington. <laughs> The main thing about the setup is it should be quite relaxed. You should be in a ready position to move, not to stay still, okay? So what are we talking about? First of all, stance, okay. Narrow is not too bad. That's a practice stance that gets your body and hands moving quite a lot, which isn't a bad thing. Do practice with a narrow stance. Too wide locks up, your body can't work, only your arms. So you don't want to have a very wide stance. Okay, it's not good for you. What we tend to want is a stance that is coming down shoulder width into the middle of our feet. We might go a little longer on a drive or a little wider, but in general, we're looking at shoulders coming down through our knees into the middle of our feet in terms of width. So just slight, more or less shoulder width with our feet slightly turned out. Now the reason we want our feet slightly turned out on both sides is it's easier to make a pivot and it takes a lot of stress off the knees and joints. So somebody who turns in this right knee, when they pivot back, they'll tend to roll their foot and get out of position, okay? So by having it a little bit turned out, when you turn, the foot can stay planted and hold onto the ground. The knee can stay pretty relaxed. The quad will twist in on itself. You'll have a little bit of a pinch here in this situation, like so, but that will sit. The nice thing about that is that knee stays above the ankle joint. It doesn't straighten up, okay? so. Shoulder width slightly turned out. Okay. We do not and absolutely never want a situation where you flex your knees. That's terrible. You look terrible if you flex your knees. You're off balance. It's powerless. Do not flex your knees. Likewise, don't stick your bum, bum out. This ain't good. It's going to hurt your back. It's going to restrict your back swing. If I stick my... I can't turn at all. Relax. What we're trying to do is get our arms to hang nice and relaxed. So I have a tiny bit of flex, but the normal amount of flex that we have all the time, if you were standing there, naturally you'd have a little, little, do a little bit of bouncing if you want, a little bit of moving, and that will find the right, it's not this, okay? And it's not that, and it's not straight. It's nice and comfortable. My weight is shared equally between the ball and the heel of my foot. I'm not on my toes. I'm not on my heel, I'm nice and comfortable. And you'll know that because it's just in that ready position that I can move any direction. From that stance, I can move everywhere. And I will say, before you take the club away, you should be moving. The best players will always have a bit of movement in the feet. You do not want to lock yourself down for sure. Okay, so that takes out tension and preps you to hit it further. You'll have more speed by moving your feet like that than you will from that position, okay? So a little bit of movement. As you can see, the feet are turned out a little bit to keep, ease the pressure on the knees. The knees aren't flexed too much. The butt isn't sticking out nice and relaxed. The posture tends to be a little bit over like that. It's not rigid. It's a little bit relaxed, so the shoulders do come over. And we'll talk about that, and it's a little bit more up, like so. We don't want to get into the... That would be impact position, where the body is down and rigid. We don't want to start in that position because we'll tend to lose it in the backswing. So we tend to stay nice and relaxed at a dress, shoulder width, arms hang like so, and we pick the club up. We don't lift the club, we don't drop the club. The club is sitting, just let it sit flush to the ground as the lie is, let your arms hang. That's, that's straightforward, you'll find a great position. You'll often find that it's about a fist, just a fist away from your left thigh. Okay, that, the six iron I'm using here, if it was a driver, I'd be up here more. So just about that distance. But again, let the club decide. Put the club flush on the ground. Don't lift your hands, don't drop your hands. Just let your club, let your body hang and that will give you the right distance away from you. Okay? Again, I'm relaxed. The last thing is the head. Do not put your head down. Absolute worst piece of advice. If you put your head down, you're gonna top shots. 
because it's going to get in the way. You've got to keep your chin up a little bit, okay? I'm not saying too far, but again, if you get your head in a relaxed position, like you did whenever you played any sport, so there's a little bit of room there, okay? We don't want it down. Again, if it gets down, it's in the way you're going to lift, okay? So we have our chin nice and relaxed, no tension in our head, no tension. And as you can see, I'm not down, I'm not up, it's just comfortable. Very important to keep that neck comfortable because it's going to take a lot of force in the swing. And if you put it in the wrong place, all of a sudden it's getting in the way and you're going to have all these compensations. So again, overbiting rule when it comes to the setup is a relaxed posture. Just nice. The old guys pre, pre 90s, just nice and relaxed. Everything was, see everything. It's not meant to be rigid. Okay, and certainly don't lift up those hands. Okay, one more thing, ball position. Okay, so I've got a six iron here and my ball position will be somewhere between the middle of my stance and the left heel. So about halfway up with a six iron, okay? I'll try and make sure I got the right angle for you. So if it was a driver, the ball position would be right up off my left toe, okay? Unless I was hitting into the wind, I might bring it back a hair to the left heel if I was trying to hit it low. And I might go all the way up to the toe if I was trying to hit a high. But in general, kind of off that left foot, left toe is your proper position with the driver. Six iron. And lastly, now this is interesting. So most people would say pitch and wedge, put it in the middle of your stance. Okay, with pitch and wedge, I probably would go middle of my stance to maybe one ball ahead of my middle of my stance. That's the right angle there. Make sure I get the right angle for you. Okay, but here's where it gets interesting. So when I go to my lob wedge, I don't push the ball back. Okay, so that's as far as it gets back with the pitch and wedge. With my lob wedge, I actually bring the ball. So if that's pitch and wedge, with my lob wedge, I actually make sure the ball stays another ball further forward. I do not want to get the ball back with a pitch, with a lob wedge like that. If you get back, you're gonna get steep on it. You're gonna get an erratic flight. If you make good contact, you're gonna to get too much spin. If you make bad contact, which often you're gonna knife it, you're gonna fat it. Keeping the ball, well, we're talking one ball further forward. Keeping it a little bit further forward on, a, on your lob wedge and sand wedge ensures a shallower divot which is a more consistent contact and flight for those clubs. Do not push the ball back. If you were a bad wedge player, lob wedge, sand wedge player, 50 yard wedge player, it's more likely that your ball is too far back than it's too far forward. So push it forward.